Do you trust the economy? Do you trust big government spending? We just passed another $1.2 trillion. The thing about U.S. money is it runs on trust. If the trust isn't there, it becomes worthless. The thing is, how do we as citizens protect the value of our money, the money that we earned in our lifetime, that we've saved in our retirement accounts? Many believe that for better or worse, that responsibility lies with the Federal Reserve. So that begs the question, do you trust the Federal Reserve to protect your money? I am Devlin Steele, Director of Education at Augusta Precious Metals. Let's take a look at the dollar and the Federal Reserve. Imagine you're Chairman Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve. Right now, you and your staff are looking at history and data and trying to come up with your best guess of what to do next. The thing is, right now, we're in a period that has never happened before in history. So what data do you use and how do you decide what to do next? One potential action the Fed could take is raise interest rates. Mr. Powell has to ask himself what would happen if he raises rates. They tried to do this in 2018 with quantitative tightening and markets dove and the daily bank liquidity fund called the repo fund ran dry like in 2007 and they quickly had to reverse course in 2019, dropping rates three times and pumping hundreds of billions of dollars into the daily bank liquidity fund. So with so much more national debt and corporate debt, how can we raise rates today or even in a year from now or even in 2023? But on the other hand, if we don't raise rates, how do we taper off inflation that is running really hot? This is a tough problem to try to navigate because any solution has major consequences. Here's what Powell said about a week ago. We're some way away from having had substantial further progress toward the maximum employment goal. That's one thing likely to keep rates down. Another big concern has to be the growing national debt load. The reason this influences interest rates is that if rates go up, the nation, you and me, have to pay more just to maintain the debt. Based on data, many experts, including myself and my cohorts at Harvard, believe that the Fed will keep interest rates at zero throughout the entire Biden administration and beyond. If you have a portion of your money in precious metals, the news could be good for quite a while, and experts agree. Gold will benefit purely from being a physical asset that you cannot print. Gold's price could rise to somewhere between $3,000 and $5,000 in the next three to five years. With my years of experience, if I was the Fed chairman, I would remain cautious and leave rates low. And then I'd probably go out and buy some gold and silver to shore up my own personal portfolio. Recently, gold and silver pulled back and experienced buyers saw it as an opportunity to buy on the dip and we were busier than ever. What happened next? The Senate released a $1.2 trillion spending plan and gold and silver both shot up. Why? Because gold and silver typically has an inverse relationship with the dollar. So do you trust the economy? Do you trust the Federal Reserve? Do you trust the dollar? It's time for you to learn more about gold and silver and find out if it is right for your portfolio. For more information about what's happening in the economy and how gold and silver play a role, go to Augusta Precious Metals website and sign up for our free guide. Better yet, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one web conference with me or a member of Augusta's education team. We're here to help. 
If you enjoyed this content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and check back often for more updates.